What's up, guys? It's your boy, Red Cloud. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to boost your FPS in the new Caldera Warzone Season 1 map. Let's get into it. So if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Red Cloud. I am a streamer over on Twitch. If you guys want to go check me out, link in the description below. If today's video helps you guys boost your FPS, please consider liking the video, subscribing, and also maybe hitting that join button to join the Akatsuki over here. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so I'm going to walk you guys through your PC optimizations before we get into Warzone. If you guys would like to just jump into the best settings for Warzone, hit the timestamp below. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to update our computer. So this is the easiest method into getting a lot of performance. Most games do run best on newer versions of Windows, and most drivers do run best on most versions of newer Windows. So if you guys have errors like these, go ahead and retry and also hit those download and install. Then when you guys have actually installed it, come back to the video and continue on with the next step. A really important next step that we're going to talk about is privacy. So privacy, you just go to Windows key and also type privacy. Then we're actually going to go down to background apps. Now, this is really important because this allows us to get rid of all of these programs in the background of our computer. And then you can also go ahead and disable any of this other stuff. Once you guys have set your privacy settings, what you can do is go to the home right here and hit gaming. This will allow us to go into the game bar. We can actually disable this. This does just interfere with gaming in general. Next for game mode, you guys will actually want to keep this on. This is actually the best setting for newer versions of Windows. It used to lag before, but now they've optimized it. Next, what you'll do is you go to the graphics settings right here and then actually tick this on. Let's say you guys have like an RX 570 or you guys have like a GTX 1050. You guys will want to tick this on. It will help your performance quite a bit. If you guys find that this does lag your PC, just come back to this actual setting and actually disable it. Next, once you guys have ticked this on, what you can do is actually go to desktop app and hit browse. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find our Call of Duty folder. So for this, you can start off by just going to your PC local disk right here and then go over to program files.86, then Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now go to modernwarfare.exe. This is going to be easier to find just from the biggest file size. Hit add. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the options tab right here. And then sometimes if you guys are using integrated graphics cards, sometimes what happens is that your computer will actually decide to use the integrated graphics instead of your actual dedicated card. So hit save from here and then you're good. Next, let's get into NVIDIA control panel. This is going to allow us for all of you guys who have GTX cards will allow us to get the best settings for our graphics cards. This is actually very identical to if you guys have an AMD card, you guys would just kind of go about the same way. For AMD, there's actually a default setting for esports mode, and that's the one you guys would want to pick. But if you guys are here on, let's say, like a GTX card, you'll actually want to go over to use my preference emphasizing Instead of quality, instead of balance, you'll want to hit it on performance. Now, don't get me wrong, your game may look a little bit more sharper, but again, you're gaining a lot of performance here. Next, we're going to update our graphics card drivers. This is super important, especially with newer games. You guys will want to make sure that you have GeForce Experience or you guys have your AMD Radeon software and up-to-date drivers. So be sure to update them. If you guys don't know what that looks like, GeForce Experience looks like this. You would actually go to drivers and then hit the check for updates. Uh, sorry, that's underneath my webcam. But you would see that you have the latest GeForce drivers right there. So once you have that installed, I'll show you guys what you can actually do in GeForce Experience. You can actually go down to general and then disable in-game overlay and also image scaling. Disable all this stuff simply because what happens is that NVIDIA is actually recording clips in the background writing to your hard drive or SSD and that adds a lot of lag and also you're just recording in general. So definitely if you guys aren't streaming or going for clips, make sure that in-game overlay is disabled. If this video is helping you so far, be sure to like the video and subscribe as well as come over to my stream at twitch.tv slash redcloud and also consider hitting that join button to help out the YouTube channel monetarily. Thank you. Next, we're going to talk about MSI Afterburner, which is a fantastic program that a ton of PC enthusiasts use. It is a free program that I've been using for years. This is what the program looks like. The reason why I'm showing you guys this is because a lot of people have their PCs in closed cases or just have poor ventilation or a lot of dust. Those types of situations actually lose a lot of performance for you guys because of heat. So 
temperature right here. My graphics card is at 37 degrees Celsius. My case is open right now. You can see my PC. Now, this is super important because if you guys are hitting high temperatures when you guys are gaming, a lot of your performance losses are from temperatures, not because of your hardware being bad. It's simply because your temperatures are too hot for your PC. So how do we fix this? We're going to go to settings right here and we're going to go to fan. Now, this is an auto fan curve that I have manually set up. I do think that if this is one of the best curves out there. So if you guys would like to copy it, feel free to do so. Very simple. Basically, what it does is if the temperature is at 30 degrees Celsius, the fan will be spinning at 40 percent. Now, if it goes up to about 45 degrees Celsius, it will spin at 50 to 60 percent. So what that does is that once my temperature goes up high, the fan will also go up high. Now, I do want to let you guys know that if your temps are incredibly hot, yes, the fan will be really loud. But. Again, your performance will be a lot better because you guys will be saving on temperatures and also stuttering from your PC. Make sure that you guys have enabled user defined software automatic fan control here or else this will not work. Now, one hidden thing that MSI Afterburner has is an auto overclocking software. So if you hit this, it will actually auto overclock your graphics card. And most of the time it does it in a very good way. Like right here, it's added 200 plus megahertz to my memory. And also the core clock is on a curve. So the more in demand the title is, the more of the overclock that it will add. So if you guys would like to do that, all you have to do is hit this little, you know, magnifying glass that says OC and then go over to scan and then bam, it takes about 20 minutes on an average card and then you guys have auto overclocked your graphics card. If you guys would like to have MSI Afterburner run automatically when your PC starts, go over to the little cogwheel again and hit start with Windows and start minimized. It'll just run and auto configure your entire fan and also that auto overclock. All right, guys, we are here in Warzone. I'm going to show you guys the best settings. I'm going to explain a few things as to why you guys might be lagging, might be stuttering, and I'll show you guys how to fix all those situations. So we're here in the graphics. What you'll want to do for display mode Definitely run this in full screen. Most games run better on full screen. If you guys are a streamer, obviously full screen borderless is a very good option, but this is fantastic for you guys who are not and also just want the best performance. Next screen refresh rate, you guys will want this on the highest one possible for you guys. For the render resolution, so for all of you guys who have a four gigabyte card or less, you guys should definitely be running this game on anywhere from 83% or lower. I would definitely suggest so because your VRAM just isn't enough to run the game on 1080p. Also, I would definitely suggest if you guys are on a two gigabyte card to run this game on 66%. Those are the sacrifices you guys will probably have to make if you guys wanna run Warzone. So anybody who has a six gigabyte card or better, you guys should be fine running on 1920 by 1080. And if you guys feel like you guys still want more performance, you can definitely turn this down to like 90 to 93%. It still looks pretty good. So if you guys are really, really struggling with your frame rate, you can enable dynamic resolution. That's something that they just added recently. You can enable this and run this at like 60 if you guys are really struggling to get 60 frames. But if you guys have a very decent PC, I would definitely suggest having this off. It will make your game look poor. Aspect ratio, you're going to leave this on automatic, sync every frame, disabled. We do not want syncing. Next is the custom frame rate. This is one of the most important settings in Warzone, simply because Warzone is very CPU dependent. You can have a really good graphics card, but if you guys have a very crappy CPU, your game will stutter. Now, I can teach you guys how to fix that in a few easy steps. So first and foremost, if you guys are streaming on a single PC like I am, I would suggest capping your frame rate. I would definitely suggest if you guys have a really beast PC to uncap your frame rate. Uh, but other than that, most of everybody who's watching this video, you guys should cap your frame rates. So what I want you guys to do is actually cap your frame rate at around 144 if you guys have a decent PC. Now, if you guys know you guys have a crappy PC, that's okay because I will help you guys figure out the best frame rate that you can get without stuttering your PC. So. For me, when I stream, I'm going to be capping my frame rate at 120 because if I push the frame rate limit too high, it will use too much of my CPU, which will slow down my OBS. So what happens here is that if you guys are experiencing a lot of stutters, but your frames look okay, what you'll do is you'll cap your frame rates, let's say at 120, and then if that doesn't help at 100, 
or by 10 by 10 by 10. So the lower it gets until it's completely stable and it does not lag your PC. So a good example of this would be if you guys start to get 100 frames on Warzone, but then your PC starts to lag, what you guys can do is come back here and actually set your custom frame rate limit to 90. And if you guys notice that the lag stops, it's because your CPU was being pushed too hard. So what you'll do is you'll cap your frame rate at 90, then you guys will have a much smoother experience when playing. All right, next thing is brightness and display gamma. You can leave this on default unless you guys want to change it. Next is NVIDIA highlights. We want this to be disabled. We definitely do not want the computer to actually be clipping things and recording to our hard drive. That's definitely a no-no. Lastly, NVIDIA reflex low latency. You guys will definitely want this on plus boost. Again, you have to read it though. It does use more power. So if you guys are concerned about that, you guys will want to use enabled. But I definitely would suggest if you guys have an NVIDIA card to keep this with enabled plus boost. So that's just our display settings. What we need to do is go to our quality settings. For field of view, the bigger your field of view is, the more your PC is actually rendering. So the more you can see around you. What you'll do if you guys are lagging here, you guys will want to turn this down to 60 and then work your way up until the point where it's comfortable for you guys to play and also get performance. I leave mine on 120. For camera movement, you actually will want to keep this on least. That way you guys, when you guys are moving and also shooting, you guys will actually get a lot more visual confirmations of what's going on. Next for our overall settings, I have everything on low. If you guys have a low end PC, I would definitely, definitely consider having everything on low. If you guys have a decent PC in the last two years, I could actually, you know, reason for having this on normal. Other than that, it will use a little bit more VRAM, but the game will look a little bit nicer. So if you guys want to trade off, go ahead and hit normal. Texture resolution, I have everything on very low. Texture filter antistropic on low, particle quality low, bullet impacts, tessellation, dismemberment, all that stuff disabled, on-demand texture streaming is out of here. For post-processing effects, everything is disabled here. We don't want depth of field, we don't want motion blur, we don't want weapon motion blur, we don't want any of this. For shadows and lighting, I have everything off simply because you still see a lot of shadows in Warzone, so it's definitely not going to be an issue, and I definitely think you can see people a lot better when you guys have shadows off. So guys, those are my absolute best settings for the new Warzone Caldera map and also season one of Warzone. If you guys would like to subscribe for the YouTube channel, I'd seriously appreciate it. We are almost at 6,000 subs over here. And also like the video, share it with your friends or anybody who is a bot that needs better frame rates. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Come check me out at my stream, twitch.tv slash redcloud. I'll go play with you guys if you guys want to. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace out.